what going on people welcome back you don't know is your boy Kamal Brown back with another video and today we're going to be speaking about the dual sense edge and my experience coming up to a year now I've had this thing since around about a couple weeks from launch and this thing has proven itself to be a extremely indispensable part of my arsenal in my gaming life in this video i'm actually going to be speaking about how it's been for me over the past 10 or so months leading up to a year i've already done a full deep dive on this controller right around launch right as i got it i went through all the bells and whistles did a full-on live unboxing everything but I'll give a little overview and let you guys know of my experience over the majority of this year and let you guys know if this piece of plastic is worth that $200 price tag. Now, let's have a little brief overview of what you get. Of course, you guys saw the hard shell case here. This is the surprising star of the show. It's very premium feeling, tough, like a turtle shell. Kept this thing protected and clean every time I finished using it. I dropped it in there, closed it down good to go I even charge it via this flap here all the time love this hard shell case very 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 nice addition to the whole set of course here's a controller itself you get two of the default sticks pre-installed two short dome shaped sticks and two tall dome shaped sticks as well from beginning I don't know why there wasn't more of a variety I mean to tell the truth these are actually my favorite not just the height but the shape it actually grips my finger more in my honest and humble opinion you get this as well the cable lock for when you're in intense gameplays like your call of duty apex legends your tekken your street fighter you know what i'm talking about peeps and you want the highest level of accuracy and the lowest amount of latency or you want to go hardwired plug it in directly into the console and you lock it in place just like this using the included braided cable that you actually get in the whole package here it is with the renowned playstation logo you stick it in you follow the logo here snap it shut and you stick it right into the controller itself and then you just lock it and there you go it will not come out and of course it is charging because i have this cable plugged into the wall actually this is actually how i rock it when the battery dies guys I've literally had to put away my old controllers because this has become my default controller. I cannot do without it. More on that later towards the end of this video. Now, pretty much the last part of this package are the extra back buttons. Now, these are what I call the default set. These are already pre-installed and these are actually my favorites. More on that later. But this is the other set that comes. It's more of a paddle kind of design. This is how easy these are to remove simply pull it out and drop the next one in just like that it's held in magnetically so they can easily be removed and dropped back in just like that right these have to be pulled uh, these are pressed now these require more intention and more thought these i actually just need to grip the controller and i press it so yeah this is instinctual for me and i prefer this one and that's about it that's pretty much all i get in the box the braided cable the shell itself the extra sticks the cable lock and the back buttons and of course the controller herself that's about it simple package but all of these items are actually pretty premium and will last a surprisingly long time none of them have shown any signs of wear and tear since i got this thing almost a year ago now getting back to the controller herself right now compared to the og right here i have did a full-on detailed description of the differences between the two of them in my previous video that i did upon launch but just to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison just the same they're more or less the same with subtle differences of course one of the main differences is how the black and white is treated in the design itself the actual visual appearance of it you have this square triangle x and o texture in the touchpad itself this is just bare smooth and white you have this pin strap that goes around to the back of the controller you have the extra back buttons of course this is the release button to release this front plate here to get to these which are surprise surprise removable joysticks so you simply lift this up and you can remove it simple as that 
these cost about 20 bucks as a default retail price from sony themselves you can find them on amazon as well ebay and most major online retailers so this is very good so all of you who may be worried about stick drift sony has a cover to this controller and this pretty much makes it worth its weight in gold as an investment now i have never had this issue yet where it's ugly head i mean i take care of my things and yeah even though i'm a hardcore gamer i do treat my peripherals with respect console drift has never really affected me before i think maybe once on a, in the ps3 days but not so much since i have noticed it and definitely not since owning this controller for almost a year now getting back to the other differences now of course you have the trigger stops which actually shorten the travel distance for the triggers themselves this is the lowest right now where it gives you the most shallow travel distance for the triggers of course for all you call of duty apex legends PUBG, and you know fighting game fans the haptics are pretty much the same the force feedback in the triggers are pretty much the same the button presses the feel of the buttons are pretty much the same which is good because they're all pretty solid on the original anyway the led light has changed of course from this shape this boring shape to this one which is pretty cool it's bright and has a more elaborate design of course there's these brand new fn or function buttons which i'll get into later and that's about it i mean in terms of the differences between this and the original controller of course check my previous video for more in-depth information now ergonomics right it's not much different from the original controller as i said there's a subtle difference in the grips here where they're actually a little more rounded especially towards the end as you can see there this has a more flattened end right here and this one is more rounded so this one actually fits a bit better in the hand not like i had an issue with fatigue with either one of the controllers but this one just feels it just melts in your hand a little bit more so ergonomics are actually pretty good this thing just melts in your hand and yeah i love this thing now if you guys can hear a little creaking coming from the button this is my gun trigger finger so I don't know if a little wear and tear has happened in this thing, who knows, but it works perfectly fine, just the same. Now getting to durability, as you guys may have guessed, aside from this slight creaking noise in the trigger, which still works, I've had absolutely no issues with reliability. This thing has held up well, aside from some gunk getting in the crevices here, as you might see, there isn't much to write home about. It has gotten dirty a couple of times. There's a little dirt here, but nothing that a little alcohol and some wipes or cleaning cloth can't fix. Held up pretty well. Nothing else giving problem. Just a little creaking here, but that's about it, people. I mean, what can I say? Sony products, usually they go the distance. So that was just touching on durability for a bit. Now battery life, I will admit the battery life is a little less than this, a little less if you think about it or go looking for it, but more or less in my regular gameplay sessions, the mileage is pretty much the same. On paper, it is a little less, but really and truly I get about five, maybe six hours with this, with the full haptics turned on, the light here turned on and you know just having a good time it has never disappointed me yet and the long braided cable that they give me actually comes in clutch a lot of the times and it gives me that warning sign of low battery i just simply plug it in and i'm good to go it's very long about nine maybe ten feet i think it's about nine feet long very very long so that is always close at hand and really and truly i cannot complain Moving on to functionalities. Now you have about four main features that makes this controller stand out from the original. The back buttons, of course, the trigger stops to shorten the travel distance of the triggers themselves, these function buttons that allow you to have custom profiles for each game and the ability to actually customize the dead zones and reaction of the analog sticks. These four things really do come in clutch in gameplay. Now the function buttons is more or less a lifestyle thing but the back buttons and the ability to edit the dead zones and these trigger stops do definitely enhance gameplays guys and this is not just for competitive games this controller i cannot put it down for games like even final fantasy or spider-man i love them they do make the games feel easier i can make more precise movements i can make more intentional attacks and combos I can be more intentional with how I get things done overall in my gameplay. Now with these extra hardware functionalities, you actually get additional software functions as well at the system level. 
Once the system detects that you have a DualSense Edge, of course, when you turn it on and connect it for the first time, you unlock various options, right? One of the main ones, as I mentioned before, is actually to set custom player profiles for each game by the function button. You simply hold it down, then a menu comes up, it gives you the option to set your own custom button layout, your dead zones, you can map whatever action you want to these back buttons here, and it's like the super button more or less. And not only does it allow you to set those customized profiles, but it allows you to select them as well. So let's say you started Call of Duty. You simply hold on the function button, the menu comes up, you select the Call of Duty profile. You're playing Tekken, you simply hold it down, the menu comes up, you select the Tekken profile. You want to play Final Fantasy, hold it down, select Final Fantasy. And you know how that goes already. You can set up to about four custom profiles at a time that you can quickly select. I don't think there's a limit on the amount you can ultimately set, but in terms of the quick menu that comes up when you hold it down, I think you can only have up to four in the queue at a time. You'll have to preset them otherwise by going deeper in the menu and switching them out. So not bad. And it does really and truly make life a lot easier from switching from game to game. Really and truly when it comes on to the dead zone thing, I've only set this once. As a matter of fact, I've gotten so used to the original version that I haven't really fooled around the dead zones too much aside from the first day that I got this thing. Haven't really touched it again since. Hopefully, keep my fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong with the analog sticks, which will call for me to actually go and do that. However, if anything goes wrong with any one of these 20 bucks, it's a no-brainer to just switch them out and call it a day. Now, 10 months, people, 10 months. Do I have any issues with this controller? No. I knew what I was getting myself into. The only thing I did not know, really and truly, is if this thing would have been worth it. And surprised to say, and I'm answering this question from now, as I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, this thing has proven, proven itself to be an indispensable part of my gaming arsenal. I'm saying that again. This is worth every penny. I cannot put it down. I cannot do without it. These actually collect dust now. I have to put them in a storage container so that they don't gather too much dust. And of course, charge them from time to time so that the batteries don't give out. But yeah, that's how much I can't do without this thing. I'll even go as far as to say one of the reasons why I was actually turned off from that brand new PlayStation Portal is because it does not have these things. The back buttons are the trigger stops. Going back to these feels like a step back for me. I can't do it, people. This is home to me now. I can't do without it. And for that very reason alone, this thing is worth it to me. Your mileage may vary. And now I get to the ultimate question, is this worth it? Yes, with a big asterisk. It depends on the type of gamer you are and the type of games that you play. If you are a competitive gamer, you will definitely gain an edge in your gameplay. From the extra back buttons here, the trigger stops if you're playing shooters, even fighting games or even racing games. These trigger stops really and truly do enhance your reaction time. These back buttons here allow you to spend less time taking your hands off the face buttons here and keep yourself in the action. You'll definitely have an advantage over the other players online. And of course, other quality of life options such as these function buttons which allow the custom button layouts and the custom player profiles, the ability to edit the dead zones and all of that really do enhance the need for this controller. Right, so it depends on the type of player that you are, the type of games you play. But with the features that this thing has, there's a little bit of everything for pretty much every player. Like I said, Call of Duty, Apex, Tekken, Street Fighter, Final Fantasy, Spider-Man, Crash Bandicoot, you name it, I found a use for these things. And just for the back buttons alone, I cannot do without this thing. So yeah, 200 bucks. The portal costs 200 bucks. You guys see what that is. It's basically a dedicated streaming device. Not much better than my laptop or my phone. I'm going to be making a video about that shortly, people. Stay tuned. That thing, I believe, is not for everybody. This thing, I believe that it is. So after close to a year of owning this thing, it's still, to this very day, a 10 out of 10 device for me and a must-have for any avid PS5 owner, if you ask me. $200 may seem like a lot, but the mere fact that by the time you get this thing, I promise you will probably never want to do without it ever again, it is worth every penny. It will prove itself 
a worthy investment over time. Whether it's for competitive play or simply just for having fun because it does make gameplay a lot more enjoyable and a lot less frustrating as well. That's it people, I mean, thanks for tuning in. If you don't know, I'll appreciate a like, subscribe and of course hitting that little notification bell so you know when the next video is out. See you guys in the next one. Peace out and take care.